Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today I'm doing an update on this pulse motor here. On this pulse motor, I'm gonna show the input milliamps on this meter and the output milliamps on this meter. They are both the same meter, uh, 100 milliamp, 100 milliamp, both are the same category. Here I have a on and off switch for the digital voltmeter. The rotor, last time I you seen it, I had beneath it a wooden pulleys. I taken those away because now it's much nicer for me to look at it. And for me those kind of things are important. Also I have now a other coil over here which is just a uh, by failure coil the reason for that is the first one you see in the uh, first video doesn't want to work it does work but when I um, send the back EMF back to the source a, uh, the whole system completely dragged down until it stops so uh, but that coil is a different story because it is a test coil that I want myself and every test coil of mine does have strange properties that I still do not understand. So this is a, just a very basic two strand wire, one run, one trigger, done. The circuitry over here is very simple. The only difference is with the first one is over here I have a diode. That dial is just before the collector going to the wrong coil. That's it. With this dial in place, you can put, you can collect the back EMF and send it right back to the wrong coil of a source capacitor without the system slowing down. And that's a very good part of it. Uh, neon bulb 110. Uh, on the neon I have a um, resistor, I bought them like that, which is a 30k resistor, a 100k pot, um, and yeah, and he, over here a 1000 UF capacitor, let's uh, give it a little spin, let me connect the wires, by hand the input is now yeah around 50 milliamps I think you can clearly see that there's a neon glowing the speed is not uh, a record speed of course but that's not the point over here the point is to see how much of that uh, let's say 55 milliamps now can I send back to the source and of course if I play with the uh, potentiometer over here I can go for less milliamps or a more but uh, what I notice is that from this point on let's say 55 milliamps I get the best percentage of efficiency and talking about that this lead is uh, what is coming from a back EMF I'm going to put it on the plus side, positive side of the capacitor, which is the same as the um, battery. And you will see then this meter here jumps up to around 40 milliamps. Here we go, so going to put it here. This is the output. The output of the back EMF that is going back to the system. That is now my input. And the rotor is still spinning, same speed, and that's a good part of this. Without dragging the system down. Gonna tune it a little bit, gonna make the input around, say, 50 milliamps. Almost there. Yeah, that's about right. As you can see, the system is drawing a total of 50 milliamps, and I have 40 milliamps going back from the back EMF 
back to the system. So with this very simple, ah yeah, and the voltage, this voltmeter over here doesn't interfere with this meter. It bypasses them all and goes straight to the positive and negative of the battery. So I can switch it on and switch it off without any problems. So the battery voltage is now 13 volts. And milliamp drives 50 milliamps in total. Sending back 40 milliamps. So the whole system is now running on 10 milliamps only. So uh, efficiency wise this is 80% efficiency which is pretty good actually because this is just a basic setup I haven't done any other sys uh, testing of other corals and maybe in, instead of using one diode on the um, back EMF maybe I can use a AV plug or something like that and get some better results so once more 50 milliamps going in in total 40 milliamps going back uh, through the back door back EMF back to the system so this system is now running on 10 milliamps and yes yeah, some of you may say yeah why not just make a motor that runs on 10 milliamps that's not the point here the point is how much power can we send back how much power can we recover while the system is still running? If I take it off now, Neon comes on, still the same speed, what is going back is zero, and the milliamps went up to 55 milliamps at 13 volts. Putting it back on, same speed. Now I'm sending back from the back EMF side just something more than 40 milliamps and here the input is just something more than 50 milliamps. So the ratio is still the same. Now I'm going to tune the pot and go lower to around 40 milliamps input. 40 milliamps input and what is going back is mm, let me look at it, let me tune it a little bit better, put it exactly at 40 milliamps input. Forty milliamps input and thirty-two milliamps back to the system. So that is still eighty percent efficiency. If I go higher on the input, then I lose that eighty percent efficiency, then I start to drop to sixty and so on. That's why I always stay in my case to 60 milliamps input and below. The input is now yeah just below 40 milliamps, maybe 39. And what is coming back is still 32. So yeah, that's maybe 83 percent efficiency. Yeah. Okay. I will try to improve that efficiency with a, another coil over here, EV plug over here, and we see how it goes. If I see anything special, I will make another update. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, by the way, let me stop it. <laughs> Almost forgot to show you something else. The rotor now is like this on the bottom. Very nice, very clean. There's a VZ at uh, the V recorder head. It's much better now. I have 12 magnets on there. At this point, they are all facing north out. I also test with south out, so it can work with it as well. Just have to play it around to find what is best. Next, I will do the south out with this coil and see how that goes with some other improvement not improvement adjust them here and there and we'll let you know
Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.